Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Happy Model Crux 3. Powered by 1202.5, 6400 kV motors. On those motors are Gym Fan 3018 by Blade Props, without motor screws. The all-in-one board is the ESC, the flight controller, the VTX, and the receiver. And this version is 2.2, which has the VTX, which is power switchable up to 200 milliwatts. The camera is the Cadix Ant. The main connector has been removed, but we do still have the connector that we can change the settings on the camera. Battery connector is an XT30. Battery is held on place with a rubber band and a foam pad. It does come with the Cadix control board so you can change settings on the camera. You get an extra foam pad, extra rubber bands for battery mounting, extra props, screwdriver, and various screws down in there. It also comes with this mount for the Insta360 Go. It's secured via zip ties. Carbon fiber looks to be two and a half millimeters thick. The frame is not all that stiff. Most of the flex seems to be happening in this area though. It weighs 42 and a quarter grams. I flew it primarily on this all line 450 milliamp 2S battery, which brings the weight up to almost 71 grams. With the Insta360 Go and the mount and the zip ties that are used to mount the mount, it weighs just about 91 grams. And if you really wanted to, you can fly it on a 1S battery and with a 520 milliamp 1S battery, it comes in at 56 and a half grams. So this is an evening time flight. So the wind is a bit calmer. We still have a bit of a breeze. It's just not high winds. And this is, you can see on the OSD, is 2S. I flew it on 1S, I'll show you a sample of that. I just don't think it's viable. Uh, I look kind of hard at a reason why you would fly 1S. And the only reason I can come up with is that you're just starting out. You want to keep your cost as low as possible and your weight as low as possible. And you're just looking at doing flat flying. In other words, you're not going to be doing any punch outs. You're not trying to do any sort of flips and rolls. Although it can do some very muted sort of flying. It's really just cruising at 1S. And it's really not designed for 1S. It's a byproduct that that Crazy BX, the 2.2 version, can do 1S that... We kind of think it should be able to do 1S, but at 6,400 kV, it's just not made for 1S. We would need something around 10,000, 11,000, 12,000 kV to really be viable on a 3-inch prop and doing a 1S flight that is really much fun. Uh, so this is probably as close as many inter uh, many of our international friends are going to get to having a baby tooth. You know, it's still 2S. Um, maybe there'll be a ready to fly that is released that is truly 1S. Uh, we'll see. Newbie Drone just released their product uh, here in the U.S. I know that shop shipping can be cost prohibitive for uh, our friends that are flying uh, outside of the U.S. But I think this is what you're looking for as far as flight feel and flight goes. If you're wanting to stay light and you're wanting to stay kind of discreet. Um, I had a pretty bad crash with the Insta360 Go, so I had the extra weight. I clipped one of the arms on the tree along the back line of the fence, and I'll show you that from an Insta360 Go perspective. Uh, it was kind of a funny moment. The Insta360 Go did eject, and then I had to kind of scrounge around to find it. Thankfully, as you saw in the quick roll, I did find it. Uh, quite efficient setup the Crux 3 is. We're going to get a flight time of over four minutes uh, in my particular flight style. If, depending upon how you fly, you may fly, find that you get way more than that. Uh, you may get way less if you're just a complete uh, burner, I guess, as well. Um, so fall is starting to set in. I'm interested in knowing how many of you live in areas where you'll be flying outdoor through, let's say, November, December, January, February. I know here it tends to get pretty cold. Um, we have had some pretty mild winters. In the last couple of years, I'm kind of wondering, I haven't looked into it, I'm kind of wondering if this winter might be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, typically, we get a fair bit of snow and we get a fair bit of ice as well as uh, just really cold temperatures. But you can see this is capable. It can do the punch outs over the house both ways. Uh, it races around pretty good. I think some people will prefer this over, say, my 1S. Um, my Zero Grav, the Ion, I believe it is, because I use the Runcam Nano 3. I really find that that's kind of one of those sections with the Run Runcam Nano 3 that you either like the camera or you really dislike the camera. There doesn't seem to be any mini middle ground there. I like the camera. Of course, that's with the original V1 lens, which we can't get anymore. Even the V2 lens, I don't think is terrible. I think it's way better than what we came from a couple years ago when we had these all-in-one BTX cameras. But it's still, you know, people have their own preference. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you just have to sacrifice a little bit of weight. And in micros, weight can mean a little or it can mean a lot. Depends on you who you are. Uh, as far as the rubber band mounting of the battery, I don't have a huge problem with that. It would be nice if we could actually use a strap. 
Uh, I'm not a fan of 3D printed holsters either. In my experience with those, if you have a fairly hard crash, the, the holsters for a 3D printed and, and batteries, that will oftentimes break as well, or at the very least, it'll come out and then you'll have to put it back in if you can find it. I didn't have any problems with the, the battery ejecting on my crashes. Again, I did lose, or the Insta360 Go did eject. And we've landed. We've come in at 4 minutes and 12 seconds, and our battery is a little bit above my normal ending voltage at 3.57 volts per cell. This is my 1S flight, and I clip a prop on the chair back and go down right away. Uh, so we're going to try to take back off. We'll do a little punch out. Pretty muted punch out, really. But like I said, this, this is viable if you're trying to do relatively flat flying. You're not trying to do much. And the reason why I say flat is that recovery, recovery is actually kind of hard. So if you go see, if you saw that dive just now, I'm sure you saw it if you're looking at the screen, but... Recovering from the dive means you have to nose up as well as throttle up. And as you get deeper into the 1S battery, you have to nose up and throttle up even harder. So doing smooth flight on 1S and doing any sort of acrobatics, even the mild acrobatics that I do, is, is challenging to keep from crashing because of that recovery voltage. And, and you know, you, we're not really punching out at this phase where voltage on our battery is already low enough to where we're kind of just flying over the top of the house. And that's why I wanted to ch show you the 1S. If you're training or if you're getting started, I should say, it can be viable because you're just trying to cruise around. You're trying to get accustomed to flying an acro, possibly. Maybe you came from horizon or angle mode, or maybe you've been flying indoor with whoops. That's how you got started, and now you're going to venture outside. 1S can be viable. I'm not sure how viable that is because there's only one shop that I'm aware of where you can buy a 1S battery with an XT30 on it already. Of course, you can transition your 1S batteries to an XT30, uh, if you're comfortable with that, it's something to, to be careful of. When you're snipping those battery wires, you got to be careful. You don't want to get your snips across both leads and you'll end up with a short and some sparks and some, uh, some excitement there. But it's something that you can do. You also want to be careful about heating up your battery wires too much. Um, that can be dangerous as well. So, th And that's one of the reasons why I kind of hedge whether it's viable on 1S. But on 2S, it's loads of fun and it should be provide you many fun flights. Initially, I was concerned about the frame and its durability because we do have some pretty thin parts there on the outside edge. But again, I added the Insta360 Go and I had at least one crash where the Insta360 Go ejected. It also snapped off my uh, the mount for the Insta360 Go. Uh, not all the way, it snapped one of the two zip ties. So it must have been a fairly robust crash and I didn't have any problems with uh, the durability of the core components of the frame. So this flight goes well on for almost five minutes, but it gets slower and slower. And you could probably notice from time to time, I'm doing less and less verticality in the flying just because there's not much there. I, I The recovery voltage just isn't there. It's too low a KV. Um, so I end up crashing out a few times during the course of this flight. I think the next thing that we can go to look, let's take a look at that crash. And we're gonna use the audio from the Insta360 Go, but I'll put the audio way, way down so it doesn't kill your ears. Because I think the uh, 360 Go bouncing through the grass, it's kind of adds a little flare or something. This is odd because it's stabilized and I'm gonna run up to this tree and right there, I catch it. And then the camera kind of lays there on the ground wondering what it's doing. Uh, after a short time, I walk over to it and I find it, but let's go back and take another look at the crash. Of course, this is stabilized mode, so it looks kind of wonky with the Insta360 Go footage. Around the playground there, we're going to head towards the tree. Everything's looking good. Oh, cut it too short. Bam. And if you slow that down frame by frame, you'll actually see where the Insta360 Go, the edge of the video, comes into play where it's trying to stabilize, but it's moving so quickly that it can't. Uh, so that was my most severe crash at my highest weight, of course, as well, because it's 2S. It has the Insta360 Go, which is like another 18 grams. We have the TPU mount. Uh, I showed you all the weight. So we have additional weight, um, and it didn't break anything or bend a shaft or anything like that. Of course, all crashes are different. Uh, your results may vary, especially if you're crashing into concrete or steel or something really, really tough. This is also some footage from the Insta360 Go and this is in FPV mode, so it's not as stabilized, and I am using the audio from the 
uh, Insta360 Go as well. Of course, that's way turned down. I wanted to give you an idea if you wanted to. It's a secondary feature. Happy Model will tell you that, that they designed the quad and then thought, well, we'll just design something to put the Insta360 Go on. So this isn't it, its primary purpose. It's really not even close to a primary purpose. Its primary purpose, purpose is to have fun on 2S. Yeah, you can put an Insta360 Go on just about anything anymore. But uh, this gives you an idea of the footage. I think it's fairly good. And the, and the trick about getting this mount is, is making sure that your zip ties run in those grooves within that mount. That is really important. And also getting the positioning on the canopy just right. I had a few flights where I had all sorts of wobbles and jello. And some of it you f you'll find in this video as well, but overall it's pretty decent for something that wasn't designed even really to carry this. It was kind of an afterthought. And I'll show you back at the desk what I'm talking about as far as those grooves. And you, if you need to, you can go back to the quick roll to get an idea of how I aligned the mount on the canopy. I don't think in my future I'll ever fly it with the Insta360 Go again. Uh, it's just not something I'm interested in. When it comes to a, an ultralight quad, what I'm wanting to do is I want to fly around and have fun in whatever manner I want to. I'm not concerned about having high definition footage. I just want to have some fun. And doing it on a cheap 2S battery with a quad that costs less than $100, pretty good value overall. I really don't think you should even really bother trying to fly this on 1S with an Insta360 Go mounted. You could try it if you get that crazy wild hair. I would never tell anyone they're doing something wrong to explore something to their heart's desire. Uh, but as far as planning to fly this with the Insta360 Go, that probably isn't going to be too much fun and your, your success will probably be fairly muted. It's going to be high throttle and very steady cruisy flight. A few final notes before we wrap up. Uh, I did lose one of the nuts in a crash. We've got a steel bolt, or I presume a steel bolt, uh, with uh, a nylon. I would put a nylon nut, excuse me. I would put a little bit of uh, thread locker on the top just to keep these things from rotating off. They, it is possible that they could rotate off. I think I lost mine in the crash. Matter of fact, I'm pretty certain that it may have been in the Insta360 Go crash, and I may not have noticed it till a flight or two later because it did introduce a little bit of a jello effect into my video as well. The, the canopy is a four port canopy or four point canopy, and that's something I think that we need to stick to. It's very, very rare that a company can design a light canopy has less than four mounting points that we actually get a really steady camera image. Also uh, note that this antenna over here I have moved that kind of the far side. Uh, you can get this without the SPI receiver. I know a lot of people have troubles with the SPI receiver. So when you look at the listing on Banggood where it says compatible I believe that is saying it's on board uh, and when it lists the receiver separately, like it gives the full name, like FR Sky R XSR or TBS Crossfire Nano RX, those, when they're fully named, are separate uh, receivers. So it'll increase your weight a little bit, but your range will be much greater. I wouldn't expect to fly this more than 70 meters out. I've taken boards just like this around my house. I've taken them around my neighbor's house when I'm testing VTXs of other sorts. Of course, this one uh, has got the VTX already built into it. So your mileage may vary as far as the range that you get. If you're in a, an industrial area that maybe has all sorts of interference, it's going to play a role. So if range is at all important to you and you're looking at this model, you need to look at probably getting the TBS Crossfire version or the FR Sky RXSR version. Those will give you the best possible range or you could just add your own after the fact if you're comfortable doing something like that. Also keep in mind, if you get the version that has got the integrated receiver on it, that it runs in D8 mode. That is the best mode. If you run this receiver and you're binding it up in D16 mode and you're running it in FR Sky X as 
as far as the configuration page goes for the receiver, that your range is also going to be quite horrible. We're seeing more and more people doing that where they're using D16 on what is designed around a D8 mode based receiver, and it's just not working out with them because of the new... Uh, restrictions that FR Sky has in place. Uh, one of my concerns with the frame was we have some pretty thin areas on the frame here in the corners and I was a little bit worried because we do get the flex. I don't know if I can do it without getting this motor in the way. Most of our flex seems to be coming right there where my thumb is. Let me see if I can put it. Yeah, it's still flex right there where my thumb is. So this area is pretty thin. Initially I was concerned about that but it just, let's see about wobble. As far as twisting goes, that's not bad. It's just when we, we do the flex straight down that I've showed a couple times in this video where the frame is not all that rigid. I think for this purposes and this weight, you know, what is it, 42 grams? Um, probably going to be just fine. I don't think too many people would notice any sort of flex in the frame if there is any. I think if you're at that level of flying that you're probably building your own anyways. So I think as far as the durability of the frame and my crashes, it lived up to all the crashes that I could give it. Uh, I already noted the one nut that I did lose in one of the crashes. But it, the bag came with extra nuts, so I was just able to dig in the bag and get a new one out. They did use the Emax tape, or what I've been calling the Emax tape, to secure the motor wires down. That's the best possible method, in my opinion. We do have four motor screws on the bottom here. We do have a mixed bag of screw types between hex and Phillips. Not crazy about that, but so be it. Something for you to note. Also, when I put my foam pad on, I cut a little notch out here so that I could get my battery lead out and I can get my battery down flat on that pad. This pad is that spongy foam. It's not sticky rubber, so it's not going to hold great. But again, as I mentioned previously, I didn't have any problems with the battery coming out. Of course, the USB port's right there. I do find that when you want to plug into the USB port, either you have to use a super long nose or you need to kind of manipulate your battery lead out of the way so that the end of your cable can get down in there. It's not very deep by any stretch, but it's just one of those things where you've got that extra little bit of battery lead that's coming up above the USB connector. The edge of your USB connector here that can stop it from seating fully and getting you a good connection via USB. There isn't much camera protection here, and that can be a concern for some people. Um, if I run my, you can feel how my screwdriver just kind of catches there at the tops because there's no can there's no camera protection by the canopy. Um, I guess if you center a pole or if you've got something flat that comes in just like that, or you come down and you crash on something that's on the ground, you know, any way that the, ca that the camera can take damage, if it hits just like that, it's going to take some sort of damage. And it is screw mounted, so it's very likely it's going to damage your lens, or at the very least, it's going to shove the lens in a little bit, and it could make, me, make the lens kind of cockeyed so that it's not in focus, and then you have to refocus it, which many of us who've been around a while, we've refocused these lenses a number of times after crashes but I do want to bring up the fact that there isn't any camera protection it's actually exposed it's a fun little flyer probably about as close as you're going to get to that toothpick experience the baby tooth that would be and at $95 pretty good value fully assembled tuned ready to go you just bind it up set your modes maybe move your OSD stuff around 30 minutes later you're out flying having fun and it comes in at $95 of course the price it always seems to change. It goes up, it goes down, there's coupons. And I'll have a link down in the video description if you're interested in picking one up. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.